Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Factorio. In the previous episode we just finished with the production of the Purple Science Pack. However, we started to run out of raw resources quickly. So today's goal is going to be to acquire some more iron, copper and potentially also stone. And we want to do that using a train network. For now it's gonna be the simplest form of network, let's say this is gonna be the stone station. Uh, let me actually try that out. So we'll have a train stopping right there. We wanna make sure we can still turn around, give me more rails please. Like this is absolutely perfect. I'm gonna need a couple of engine units here in order to build a locomotive and we also want at least two cargo wagons. Two are probably enough for this starter base, we'll have to see. So the locomotive goes right there and we'll have two cargo wagons attached. Now we only need a couple of chests in order to get things out of the cargo wagons and we're gonna do six chests per cargo wagon to get the items in and out of there as quickly as possible. We'll also have to upgrade to stack inserters the most powerful and quickest one of them all. For now I think I'm gonna downgrade to four chests per wagon. Gonna need a bunch of power poles to cover this all connected to our existing network. Okay, where do we want to bring this? There is some iron ore over there, pretty large. Another patch to the left side, less convenient to pick up. Yeah, we're gonna choose the right side to surf this first train station. So we wanna make our way back up here. Uh, actually, let's not do that. I want to leave enough space. If we can, I would like to just go straight right there. So we'll have to fill this up with landfill. Give me some stone craft landfill. Holy cow, this requires a lot of stone. But, but if we do this right, we won't have to cover that much. In the future, we can go ahead, set up another station right next to the first one here. And if we do this right, we can easily connect all of these rails and have the station at the same time. We would then have another chest, another inserter. Okay, that could be a little bit of a problem. Maybe I'm gonna move the second system just a tad over. I was thinking of something like that with spare room for a couple of stations and now we just combine these rails. Mm, actually, let's have two lines so... The trains going in opposite directions don't have to wait on one another. Gonna clear up a little bit of space here. Oh my gosh, they're on cliffs too. Go away! Now, this is a slightly longer route than I first expected. I'm gonna be right back once we are at the vein. As a matter of fact, for now I'm gonna combine the lines because for a good while we only really need the increased amount of iron. Yeah, I think we can wait just a little longer with the copper, but we are almost out of iron. So to save on material and time, we're only gonna have one line here. Here we are at the iron deposit. It is actually pretty large. Yeah, this is gonna suffice for a while, especially if we only use it for the starter base. Let's set up an outpost. We're gonna have four output belts towards the south, but also use the fast transport belts. And now we should be able to easily plan this ahead. Okay, wow. That is quite a project, but there we go, four output belts and we're gonna use those to fill up the trains. Let's maybe get that situated right here. Station, we only need to serve the first two trains for now, but that might change soon. If we use up the ore too quickly though, we still have an option to expand. We're gonna have an easy loop like so in order to serve this station. So we come from the bottom, loop around here and then we can just go back down. Now one thing we shouldn't forget is the signaling. I'm just gonna craft myself a couple of rail and chain signals. Since we're only gonna use one train on this track, it is not that tremendously important, but it is good to already do it. Wherever we have an intersection, we wanna set up either a rail signal or a chain signal. We're gonna dive into this much deeper once we set up the definite train system, but for now, just remember, in front of every intersection, you want a rail signal. And after every intersection where you have enough space to accommodate a entire train, you want a rail signal. Same thing here, we're coming from this direction. There's gonna be an intersection, so we wanna set up a signal right in front of the intersection. And after the intersection, if we have enough space for an entire train, we're gonna use a normal rail signal. We can already see these lights are now red, and that is because our train is currently in the other station, which we haven't signaled yet. So imagine the train is coming from this side, we want in front of the intersection a chain signal, after that a rail signal. And if we come from this side, we also want a chain and here a rail signal. 
Great, let's also get a steel chest going for the time being until we use robots. And I'm also gonna grab a whole bunch of coal. Gonna put that all in this chest and probably a normal inserter to feed the train with. Actually, I need to move this one over. There we go. Now the train is being fueled up. All we have to do is now build this outpost with everything that I just planned out. Also including the station. And then we can actually tell the train to do something. Alright, I think we're more or less done with everything. We are gonna manually drive our train over there. No, actually, as a matter of fact, we're not gonna do that. I already named my stations. This one is called Unload Iron Ore. And the top one here is called Load Iron Ore. So what we can do now is add a station to our train, load iron ore, and we want to do that until full cargo. And then we want to move on to unload iron ore using the condition empty cargo. And with that out of the way, we can already set this to automatic and we're just going to drive along. And there we go. As you can see, I've already placed most of the things. There are just a couple of electric mining drills missing. So why don't we go ahead and actually set this on. Can I build? Yeah, I need some more fast transport belts. There we go. Now we can load up our train and this is going rather quickly. And it will go even quicker once these buffer chests have the opportunity to fill up. Now I'm just gonna cut this short for a little bit and we want to drive back to see how that works. And here we are at the station. We are unloading. I didn't have the chance to replace everything with the fast transport belts, but we're working on it. These belts are going all the way back to the first iron ore extraction site. And right here, I'm just combining the two belts. I'm going to leave them at yellow belts for now, but we will upgrade them soon. There we go, iron incoming and my train is already on its merry way. It might very well be that we have to add an additional wagon to the train. We'll have to think about how that's going to work out. But if we go ahead and check this out, we can see yeah, this is filling up fairly quickly. Maybe we should still consider adding additional chests. But there we go, train is already on its way back, being unloaded. Absolutely wonderful. I'm gonna add the rest of the drills and then we have to be a little bit careful. Yeah, look at that. We will have to take care of all of these nests and they already look fairly decently developed. So yeah, that is actually gonna be fairly interesting. We're gonna start with this nest here, which is fairly small and it shouldn't be a problem to take them out fairly quickly. Uh, okay, okay, maybe it is a slight problem. Okay, I think I'm ready to upgrade to better armor. Holy cow, we were actually a little bit closer to dying than I thought. Yeah, I guess now it is definitely time to upgrade to power armor. But I still first want to take care of these guys because they are otherwise attacking my base unpredictably. Gonna have five robots this time around, get my grenades ready and let's do this. Let's freaking do this. Oh my gosh. I regret nothing. Okay, I'm just gonna throw my grenades around here, trying to get as little damage as possible. This is actually kind of fun together with the defender robot. Okay, we're back at full health. We're gonna do this with 10 robots this time around because this is a much larger camp here. And I wanna try to throw my grenades and hopefully I don't have to focus on the little guys too much. I just want to avoid all the spitting if possible. Okay, I did a bad, bad job at that. Yeah, those freaking spitting worms are a little bit of a problem. Oh no, look at them. They are absorbing the pollution. Not good. They're gonna attack very soon. If we're lucky, we can make our way over there in time. I think we can. Yes, let's take them out. Take them all out. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. We're gonna continue with the nests down here at the bottom. Oh no, many spitting worms. I hate you guys. Though I think, yeah, we took them all out successfully. Great stuff. Let me just uh, continue with clearing this up and I'm gonna be right back. Okay, I took care of a couple of surrounding camps. I think I need to upgrade before taking on the other camp here. And the first thing to upgrade are the oil refineries. So let me just cut off the oil flow here. I'm gonna let them use up the rest of the oil and then we switch the recipe. We just finished the tank research, which is basically an upgrade to our current car. I also would like to get a personal robo port. It is time to dive into robots. Get that logistic going for us. And there we go. That's it. Let's swap the recipe to advanced processing. And we want to do that for all of these. We now need to give the refineries access to water. 
and we want to do this right here. Let me get a couple of pipes. There we go. This should be straightforward enough. Couple of normal pipes to hook them all up. And I think we can also already hook them up to the oil again. Now with the same amount of crude oil and a little bit of additional water, we will be getting way more petroleum as well as light and heavy oil. We should now build a couple of chemical plants and think about what we want to do with the light and heavy oil. If we check this out, we can build... Oh, batteries. I totally forgot about that. We need those too. But lubricant is going to be important using heavy oil. Maybe first of all, let's try to get the liquids out of there. We're going to catch the light oil right there. We can already hook this up. And then the same story with the heavy oil a little bit further away. And we will be getting access to all of these liquids individually. I'm gonna leave a little bit of theoretical expansion space for my sulfur and sulfuric acid. First thing I want to do is produce enough lubricant. Let's maybe fill up the tank with this. And we're gonna start with only two machines. So what we can do is bring some heavy oil over here. Just hook these guys up. And that production is also going for us. I'm then going to add a storage tank here. We want to connect both chemical plants to it. And my goal is basically to keep this always full before we use the heavy oil for something else. I'm leaving some more theoretical space before we continue. Right here I want to use the rest of the heavy oil to crack down to light oil and then further to petroleum. So we want to go ahead and also connect this in a meaningful way. Actually let me reroute the water a little bit. There we go. That should do the trick. Can I move over here somehow? Yeah. Oh no, I got myself trapped. Okay, now it's time to craft a little bit of red wire. I'm gonna use the red wire to create local networks and the green wire is gonna serve global networks. But essentially what we want to do is connect the two items we want to communicate with. And if I remember correctly, we are also going to need a pump for this. So we can turn it on and off as we please. We can add this guy right here easily. Then I want to take my wire and connect them to a power pole. Let's actually just do it this way. Move over there all the way to the pump. We then get a extra menu on the pump and what we want to do is enable and disable it depending on the status of our lubricant. So we want to choose lubricant and if we have more than let's say 20,000 we can store 25,000. So 20k, set that, then we want to enable it if we have more because then it's going to use the heavy oil also to crack down to light oil. We then continue with the next step, which is going to be heavy oil to light oil. No, wait a second. We just did that. I meant light oil to petroleum. Because now we can simply take our output here and connect it. And we also need access to water at this point, which we can easily achieve. Tuck, and there we go. Now, all we need to do actually is find a connection with our light oil. We're going to bring this out here. Let me see. Maybe we just connect it like so. And then, yes, cool. We can do it just like that. And now everything is working again. We have more petroleum that we can connect to our already existing petroleum line here. So just move this over here, get some more pipes and we can feed our plastic machine this way. Okay, now we just have to balance it. Let me actually see if we uh, check this out here. We can see that right now we probably end up with way too much light oil. So that is the first machine we want to duplicate. I'm gonna go ahead, get two more of those going. We could also probably expand towards the other side, but I want to be sure to leave enough space for everything. Let's get that water in there and some light oil as well. Blop, 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 blop. No! And we can connect the output like so, I guess. Wonderful. This should now already be a much better ratio, only 15 to spare. But I guess it's inaccurate because it doesn't take into account the pump we installed here. Anyhow, I feel much better about this now because we provide enough plastic for all of our advanced circuit making. So what is the next point on the agenda? If I can, I would like to outfit myself a little bit better. Just get myself some power armor to start off with. I think the first thing I want to do is to set up something here, maybe temporarily, but this is going to produce electric engine units. We need some lubricant for that. So let's rotate this around with R and connect it. We can grab a whole bunch of engines from our production line. 
And I'm going to put them right here together with... Oh no, electronic circuits. There we go. Let's do this. 60 circuits for now. I'm gonna need a bit more, I think. And besides that, we're also gonna need some processing units. So let's get another assembling table in the joint. For the processing units, we need some sulfuric acid. Luckily enough, we also have that. I'm only gonna craft this temporarily to get myself a stronger armor because I feel like we have to take out at least this spider nest and I wanna be prepared for it. So I'm actually gonna move this assembling table over here. Processing unit, turn this around and connect the pipe. Let's see, uh, come on, like so. Okay, looks like this is going to take a while at least. Let's see what other things we will require. For instance, a personal roboport, so we already need to prepare to make batteries. We need sulfuric acid, iron plates and copper plates. We can easily extract the sulfuric acid out of here. That is not gonna be a problem. And then maybe at this point we're gonna bring up the copper and iron. Let me just interrupt this. I want them right here on one single belt. So we're gonna combine them in some way. For instance, like this should be working out. Let me just fix the balance there. Okay, I think that did the trick. Not very professional, but let's continue. We're gonna keep moving up here. Maybe set up a bunch of chemical labs here. Up to three we can easily fit. I think at this point I'm even gonna turn them around. So we can use this line here. And we can also get access to the sulfuric acid. Straight from over here actually. Wonderful. Connect you, you and you. And all we need is an inserter, a bunch of power poles. And we're already creating the batteries. Looks like a normal inserter is gonna do the trick. Not sure how many batteries we're gonna need, but we definitely need a lot if we want to switch over to solar power. Okay, by now I think I got enough materials. Indeed, power armor. Let's craft one. I'm also gonna get myself the belt immunity equipment. We definitely also want to go for an exoskeleton and a personal roboport would be great. Now I'm gonna go for the perfect night glasses from the... Afraid of the Dark mod, mostly for YouTube purposes, not making it too dark. We're also further gonna improve ourselves with some energy shields, maybe more robot followers. And ooh, look at that, automation 3. I actually would like to get that. Also, the beacons. Let's research those as well. With all that out of the way, let's equip the armor, right click and we should be able to insert a few things. Personal Roboport, we're just gonna start with one. This actually sucks a lot of power. Belt Immunity, a must in my opinion. This way the belts won't drag us around anymore. And then we just need a whole bunch of batteries. We can make as many as we want because we're gonna need 10 of them for the upgraded Mark II version. But we're not quite ready for that yet. We will be once we create the next science pack. Last but not least, our current source of power is gonna be portable solar panels, so we need way more of those. I should be able to grab myself some materials over here. Come on, circuits. And then we also need a little bit of plastic. No, actually, plastic wasn't it. We required copper. Okay then, let's get those batteries arranged. I wanna have quite a few of them, but we also need solar panels, like 15 or so, maybe even more. Perfect night glasses. Oh, they are actually fairly large. But I'm assuming now we can't even tell the difference between day and night time. Okay, one more thing that I built myself is the tank, of course. Now, we are gonna use this guy in order to invade more critters. I already built a whole bunch of explosive shells and I also filled it up with piercing round magazines. So why don't we go ahead and take this bad boy for a spin? Uh... <laughs> You did not see that. We can actually use the tank to drive straight through the forest, as well as the biter bases. With tap, we can switch between the weapons. I'm gonna choose my explosive cannon shells. There we go, moment of truth. We're just gonna drive straight through and shoot a whole bunch. And then, well, I hope I'm gonna survive. Uh, come on, oh, okay. It is a little bit slower than I anticipated. Go, get, get. Get away, get away, get away, get away, get away, get away. Oh my gosh, okay. No problem, switch to the machine gun. Get rid of these annoying little guys. Then we just get out of there and fix the darn thing. But yeah, I was hoping to be a tiny bit more powerful. Attempt number two, do a whole bunch of shooting. 
Go, drive through. And I just want to destroy as many spawners as possible. And these little annoying worms, man. Let me tell you. The freaking spitting. But uh, there we go. I think we got it. And this was the only encampment that was really dangerous at the moment. Yeah, there we go. Otherwise, we are pretty good for the time being. Great. I'm gonna make my way back home. And after that, I think we can wrap it up. We're just gonna finish the power armor. And that's probably gonna be it. And there we go. I just ran out of power in my power armor and it went all dark suddenly. And there we go. It just turned on again. So that seems to be a pretty good deal. Would you please stay with me, guy? I want to fix you. Okay, let's see what we can do about this. More solar panels, that's for sure. We can also see the charging here. At the moment, this thing is being charged very, very slowly. For now, the Roboport is actually more important to me than the Exoskeleton. I finally want to get into more comfortable base building, especially now that we can slowly transit towards the end phase before the actual mega base expansion. It is also soon time to make our own mall where we're going to use a range of machines to supply us automatically with all kinds of materials we need for building. But yeah, until then, I would say we're going to wrap things up. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you in the next one. Bye bye.